Hey, it's Arky. Today I want to wrap some loose ends from my character customization tutorial. In that tutorial, I showed how to change some of your player's sprites so you can create a fully customizable character and change stuff like the hair or clothing. Go check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. Now I want to go over attaching items to the hand of your character and also being able to animate those items. Right here, you can see me being able to switch items that my character is holding. This is a game that I'm developing and it's called Miner's Delight. You can check out my first devlog to see more. In my pixel editing software, first notice that I keep each component on separate layers. This is so that I can stitch them together later on and be able to customize each component easily. When making something like a sword, you have two options. One is that for every frame of an animation, you can draw the sword. However, this can be really time consuming especially if you just want to have different weapons and items you want to hold. Then you would have to draw out several sprites for every different weapon you have. Say for instance, you have eight different animations and each of them have eight frames. So that means for one weapon, you would have to draw it 64 times. If you have two, then you would have to draw 128 frames. You can see how it can easily get out of hand. The method that I use in my game requires you to draw the weapon just once, and then we'll use the game engine to animate the position and rotation of the sprite. In this way, we can also reuse the same animation for multiple different weapons, effectively cutting down the work of adding new weapons to be just drawing it once. Once you have all your layers and their respective animations drawn, let's export each of them into their own sprite sheets. For this tutorial, I'll just use the idle and walking animations for demonstration. And for the sword and pickaxe, I'll just export it as their own PNG file because we'll be animating those within the game engine. Alright, now here in Godot, I've added all the sprite sheets and images to the project folder. I'm going to create a node 2D and then create a kinematic body 2D for the player scene within it. I'll save the player as its own scene. Since the player is a kinematic body type, I'll add a collision shape 2D. Now, I'll also add a no 2D as a child to encapsulate all of the sprites that we'll be working with. And within it, I'll create sprite nodes for all of the layers. Make sure to set the V frames and H frames property to match the number of rows and columns in the sprite sheets. For the on-hand item sprite, I'll temporarily add the sword image to its texture property. Don't worry, later on we'll be able to change the texture with code. Okay, so I'll save it and try running it. And yeah, it's just too small, so I'll scale up the player. I'll just set the scale to 3 for x and y direction. And great, we can see it with all the clothes. Now, I'll add an animation player to animate our character. I'll start off by doing the left idle position. I'll make the length 0.8 seconds and I'll set it to be looping. I'll keyframe the frame property from 0 to 7 and I'll do this for all of the sprite nodes, except for the on-hand sprite since it does not have a sprite sheet. Now that we have set up the idle animation, let's enable the play on load property in the animation player so we can see the animation when we press start. And great, we can see our player animating, except for the sword which is not in the right place. So let's set that up. To correctly set the sword up, let's make sure the animation player is set to the first frame. Now let's drag the sword into the right position and also rotate it to face downwards. But before that, let's set the pixel snap and also rotation snap since we're working with pixels and don't want any tearing. Notice how the sword handle is being rendered in front of the arms. To fix this, let's drag the on hand sprite before the arms node so that it is rendered below the arms. Also, let's make sure to keyframe the position and rotation of the on hand sprite. Now let's click play and great, now we can see our player with the sword in the correct position. Now let's try doing the walking animation. It's the same process as the idle animation, but the frames we key are going to be from 16 to 23.
Let's enable the play on load for the left walking animation and click play. Our player is walking now, but the sword isn't moving alongside the arms. Let's fix that. For each frame within the animation, we want to change the position and rotation of the sword to match the hand's position. We key these properties for each frame and then we can have the sword move as expected. Make sure to change the animation property for both the position and rotation to be discrete as keeping it continuous will cause movement in between frames and we don't want that. Let's click play and check it out. Nice! We got the sword to move. Now let's try replacing the sword with the pickaxe and see. This also works, so essentially we can create as many different types of swords or pickaxes and not worry about doing the walking animation for them. If we want to be able to change the character's item on hand during game runtime, we need to do it through code, so let's add a script to the player node. I'll store the sword and pickaxe textures in variables by preloading them. Then, I'll implement the unhandled input function so we can try to change the item the player holds through button presses. I'll go to the input map tab within project settings and I'll add the action change equip. I'll assign a key space, for instance, and now when the change equip action is pressed, I want to change the texture of the item that the player is holding. So first I need to get access to the onhand sprite to be able to change it. So I'll create a variable for that. And now I'll try to change the texture. On second thought, I'll add two actions, each corresponding to holding the sword and holding the pickaxe. So I have changed the sword and I'll set that to be Q. And then I'll also add change to pickaxe, which I'll set to be E. And now I can do an else if statement. And then if action press is changed to pickaxe, I'll set the sprite to be the pickaxe texture. I'll click play and let's see. Great, now I'm able to switch between pickaxe and sword on key press. With this, if we want to add a new sword, we can just quickly draw one and add it to our game. And that's all for today. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you. And if you found this video helpful, drop a like and consider subscribing. Till next time.